I'm deeply thankful for the journey we have been on for the last 10 years with Club Essexnet. Let me describe this journey to you in 10 very short personal flashes. 10 years, 10 minutes, 10 flashes. A new life does not start with birth, but with procreation. Genes are key. What are my ethical genes and what are the ethical genes of Globesics Net? What is the DNA of our foundation where we are here together and which I founded 10 years ago? Let me share 10 flashes which describe these 10 genes. The first, Kirby Kirby, the value gene. It was a hot summer day. I was only 10 years old and I had a school free afternoon. I wanted to go to swim in the public bath of the village, but my mother said, no, you know that your classmates are farmers, sons, and they are all working in the fields for harvesting potatoes. You should go and help them, and then you will finish all earlier, and then you go to swim together. That's my, the answer of my mother. A few weeks later, I came home from school and said to my father, nobody wants to sit beside Kirby Kirby. That was his name, Kirby Kirby, Jacob Kirby. Huh? He really smells bad, like the cows in the barn that he works in before the school every day. That was child labor in the farm. My father, pastor in this small farmer's village, answered without hesitation, then from tomorrow, you will sit next to him every day. Because of these values of my parents, justice and solidarity became my core values as an ethicist. The value gene, we could call it. Second flash, smuggling books, the partner gene. In 1973, at 22 years old, I was a theology student in Basel and I supported the, what we called book aid, Bücherhilfe, by smuggling theological books during the middle of the Cold War to a pastor in communist Romania. My work with books started 40 years ago, so not just 10 years ago. I smuggled these books with my girlfriend at that time, Susan, using her car it was dangerous and risky, and we could have ended up in jail. But we didn't, and I married Suzanne two years after that, sitting here. She has been a constant pillar, supporting me during the last 40 years. Globesics Net is also her child. Without her constant encouragement, we would not be here today. I call it the partner gene. The third flash, bread and knowledge for all, the inclusion gene, or inclusivity gene. From 92 to 2004, I was working in development as a director of the Swiss Protestant development organization, Bread for All, as Walter Fust mentioned. My, the name was and continues to be program. Bread for all means empowering people to get what they need to leave. This led me to start a program for ethics centers in developing countries to produce a high quality of advocacy work based on values. Bread for all also means the inclusive development for all people, no matter what their background or religion is. That's why I call it the inclusivity or inclusion scene, which is in this global ethics network. The fourth flash. This is 2003, the innovation team. Bread means education, health, jobs, and other vital resources. But it also means access to information, which is a necessary precondition for living in our modern information society. I was a member of the Swiss Advisory Board for the planning of the World Summit for the Information Society, WSIS, in Geneva in 2003. This huge global event opened my eyes to the innovative way 
that ICTs, information and communication technologies, can be used for development. I discovered the huge potential of modern internet-based online communication as an instrument for equal access to information. I call it the innovation gene, which was added during that period, early 2000. And then it led to the fifth flash, the founding workshop, the networking team. Essex development, Essex development did the internet. These are the three pillars of our organization. I invited 25 hand-picked persons from all continents to a founding workshop in August 2004 at the Ecumenical Center in Bosnia near Geneva. With Evelyn Appia, uh, she's not here, she's still in Geneva. She was working here in Geneva, originally from Ghana. She helped us from the very first day as we prepared the name, the logo. I remember we sat here with a, with a webmaster in Geneva. We brainstormed how we could call, be called. Global Ethics was already taken as URL, so Globe Ethics Net was the result of uh, uh, URL uh, discussion. And a website we developed with a community of personal and institutional pages. The workshop then developed our identity, vision and mission, and the principles and structures of this global network on ethics. Then the baby was born, and you see the founding workshop here on the picture. Uh, you see the 10 years brochure which you have in your folder and can take more copies there. <coughs> so this group of people, and we tested the website on the screen, people registered. That was really when the baby was born 10 years ago. This is the networking gene. It became, I became the founding president of the steering committee and then the association. But from the very beginning, it was a collaborative effort to create Globe Ethics Net. It was not a one-man show. It was really a joint effort of reflection with people from around the world to say, what do we want? What do we share? What are our co common convictions and values? The sixth point, the call from India. I call it the service gene. In 2006, we offered for a mandate for a networking specialist <coughs> because we have seen we need the voice from the south and we need these um, specialists. And luckily for us, Atanu Garai applied. He was a young Indian IT specialist and a librarian who was working for ICT for Indian Villages. He wrote a booklet on ICT for Indian villages. He helped to develop thousands of villages uh, with their internet access and communities. And he wrote in his application, we urgently need online libraries for our people. We don't afford uh, physical libraries. I would like to help you develop an online ethics library. I was surprised when I got this application. I tried to listen to this cry, we could say, and the steering committee decided to give him the mandate to develop this honor library together with me. Over one and a half years, we needed to develop the concepts to have competition of specialists. It was quite complicated and demanding. And it is a great uh, thank also to Point Software in Zurich, who helped us from the very beginning and is still our um, software provider to develop this concept and then further, further, further develop it. The service chain, I call it because we try to be a service listening to the needs and calls of people. The seventh, uh, very important, I call it the offer from Lindsay, the supporters chain. Just a child cannot grow without Food, an organization cannot grow without financial resources. The key supporter during these 10 years, and even longer than 10 years before we were born, was the Ursula and Walter Lindsay Foundation. And I'm very grateful that two representatives, Walter Lindsay and Rista Asfalk, are with us. We could start the online library because a very large amount was spent 
to by them to develop the software and the website. I remember we got the offers and said, you need $300,000 of Swiss francs. I said, but where to take 300,000? He committed this amount. Without that, we wouldn't have this online library. During the economic crisis of 2007, I had to decide whether we re either remain on a small level or better close Globasics Net, because it was difficult with little money to have growth and development. It was a tough time, and I would need to invest myself into the organization full time. That was the decision I had to take. And it was also Walter Lindsay who encouraged me, go ahead with that. They said, Walter and Ursula Lindsay, yes, we will invest in you, go ahead. That allowed me to quit my good position as a cent uh, director of an ethics center and to jump into the cold water with all the risks uh, of this adventure. Just as we would not be here without my wife, we would not be here without Walter and Ursula Lindsay and Rita Astfalk, Managing Director of the Lindsay Foundation. So the supporters gene is an important one. Point eight, I call it sleepless nights, the entrepreneurial gene. The salary for the director is not enough to run a global foundation. In 2008, over several months, I still remember here in Geneva, I woke up every night at four in the morning because I did not know how to pay the salaries of our five staff. And we eventually had to cut two of the four position, or five positions. That was very tough. Um, I'm a social entrepreneur we could say, and the Globasics Net can be called a social enterprise, and a foundation which has to struggle every day for its income. That means entrepreneurial uh, spirit which is needed. The only difference to another enterprise is that we don't get bonuses. So that's the entrepreneurial gene, which I think is the challenge, but also the chance, because we had the freedom to develop wherever we need to develop without the boundaries of heavy institutional um, barriers. The ninth point, the board, the governance gene. A strong, competent, and clear governing structure is key for the continued credibility and sustainability of an organization. We are privileged to have such a committed, competent, global, and diversified international Board of Foundation, made up of nine impressive personalities from all continents. When I became executive director, I did not want to remain president as I was, in the interest of good governance, in the interest of healthy control of power. The Swiss law would have allowed me to be both director and president, but I said, no, we need good, stable structures. I may fail and uh, the organization has to sustain without me or against me if needed, if I'm wrong. So we are blessed that Ambassador Walter Fuss, long-term director general of the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, SDC, accepted my request to become president. This is the governance gene, I call it. And the last but not, uh, not least, the success, the growth gene. In the last five years, we had a substantial growth in our still modest um, organization in our number of registered participants. In 2008, we have had 3,000, 4,000, now 127,000 from 200 partner, uh, countries. And we have 200 partner organizations on all continents with signed contracts. We also went from zero regional programs to 10 in uh, uh, the different continents. We tripled the size of the libraries. We tripled the budget from one to three million Swiss francs. Of course, we can say in a global uh, scale, what is three million dollars or Swiss francs, but still it is a beginning and it is a success. However, 
This 10-year-old child is still growing. It needs food, means financial resources. It needs careful guidance for the next 10 years. Growth is not a goal in itself, but growth is an important factor in increasing impact. So that more and more people with values, that's our motto, people with values uh, can transform the world. That's what I call the growth gene. And as we compare it with a child, 10 years old, between 10 and 20 years is a very important phase in the growth of a human uh, being. And I think that's why we are also looking forward to the next 10 years as a very important phase. And we look back first. I see these 10 genes in the DNA of Globe Ethics Net. The values gene, the partner gene, the inclusion gene, the innovation gene, the networking gene, the service gene, the supporters gene, the entrepreneurial gene, the governance gene, and the growth gene. And the blood of all our efforts is faith with hope. We could sometimes um, be pessimist, but I think we see in this network so much energy of people who want to make a difference, including our staff, including our partners. And that's this energy which keeps this Globe Essex Net going on and moving forward. So I can happily summarize this journey with a title that we put on the back of this 10 years jubilee uh, brochure, Thankfulness for the Past and confidence in the future. Thank you.